So just as recording acoustic drum sets has a lot of perks over recording electric drum sets, so recording a guitar amp has a lot of perks over recording a direct line into your DAW. So today we're going to be talking about best practices in terms of mic placement for recording your guitars and your basses and anything that comes out of a speaker. What is up, Yoshis? It is so good to see you. My name is Beth and I run Steadfast Descent. Today we're going to be talking about mic placement for recording your guitar cabinets, your amps. Basically, anything that has a speaker in it, if it's got a cone to speak to, we're going to talk about how to place your mic so that it sounds actually great. Before we get too far here, let us know if you're here to record guitar amps or bass amps, or maybe both. Most of the work you want to do is honestly in mic placement because then you don't have to do all of the work in the DAW to take what could have sounded perfect from the mic and make it sound okay. All of the work you want preloaded in the front, so by choosing where you place your mic and by experimenting to get the sound that you're actually interested in, you're going to save yourself so much work in terms of getting to the mixing phase. It's so much easier to mix something that already sounds great than to try and take something and make it sound okay. So when it comes to miking an amp, there's basically two philosophies. Number one is to simply point your mic directly at the center of the speaker. Pretty simple, pretty hard to go wrong. When you point at the center of your cone, what ends up happening is that you get a better bass response. And depending on how close to the center you place your mic, you'll end up getting a different level of volume and a different tone quality. You can do a lot of EQing for your amp by placing your mic in the center. So this is really great for guitars because you might want to add a little bit of bass to your sound. But on a bass, I mean, you're already pretty down there. So you may want to do the second mic placement, which basically means pointing the front of your mic directly at the side of the cone. So if you just take your mic pointed straight at the center and you tilt it at a 45 degree angle, you're pretty much really close to where you want to be pointing in terms of getting the sound of the cone. Now this is great because it accentuates the sounds of the highs and the mids rather than the bass, which allows you to, as I said, do some EQing just by pointing your mic at a different direction. Now if that sounds too easy, you're probably right, because while you can probably just point your mic and go, you want to experiment. You're trying to record the best sound that you can get. So here's a list of the things you're going to want to try out. First off is your distance from the grill. That mesh part in front of your amp, you can place your mic anywhere from right up on that mesh to all the way across the room. And doing that will change the way that your mic sounds, and it'll change the way that your amp sounds, and it'll change the sounds that your mic catches, all of which you want to experiment with in terms of getting the sound that you actually want. Now while I'm assuming you're probably micing the front of your amp, don't forget that you can mic the back of your amp, especially if it's got an open face. Pointing your mic at the back of the cone has a different sound, and it may actually be a sound in terms of EQing or mixing or whatever that works better for what you're trying to go for. You might also change the room you're recording in. Recording it in your closet with all of your clothes is gonna sound different than recording it in your bathroom where all of the sounds are reflecting. Now this may be a problem for you, and you may be wondering to yourself, ugh, I am getting just too much of the room sound. Well, a simple way you can fix that is by simply throwing a comforter over the entire setup. The comforter will drown out all of the reflective sounds, and you usually you're not spacing it so far out that you can't cover both the mic and the amp to preserve the sound. Now while I said you should just place the mic either directly in the middle or at a slight angle on the cone, you can totally change the placement on the cone. Maybe you want to place your angled mic in between the top of the cone and the middle of the cone. That's going to change your sound. And this kind of experimentation will help you find where you want to place it. And finally, one other thing that you might want to experiment is simply the loudness of your speaker. Cranking it up when the mic is all the way across the room, it's going to sound different than turning it down when your mic is right up against it. So you can experiment with that to try and find the sound that you are really looking for. Now I will say that there is no need to try and clip your mic. You can leave yourself a lot of what's called headspace in your recording. To prevent yourself from peaking, which is simply whatever happens when the sound goes above zero decibels, you want to give yourself some space. So you don't need to record too loud. Luckily, because of the digital age we live in, if it's really quiet, there's a lot of stuff you can do to bump it up in the end. But you are correct. We are trying to do as much of the work beforehand as possible. So experimenting with the loudness of your speaker is super useful. Now, if you have, like my PV amp does, two cones, well, what do you do then? If you're trying to go quick, just pick the cone that sounds the best and point it in the middle or slightly angled. But you might also be able to experiment with placing your mic in between the two cones. All in all, in order to get a surefire success at having a good sound, just point it straight at the middle of your cone. And if that's sounding too bassy, tilt it a little bit and see what changes with that. For guitar, pointing at the middle is probably best because it could use help boosting your bass. 
But on a bass, you already have enough of that sound, so maybe tilting it will help you like actually round out all of the sounds so that you hear the entirety of the bass and not just its woof. Any and all of this can be used with any and all mics. Now this video fits in a series of videos I'm doing on home recording, so if you haven't yet, go ahead and check out last week's video. And if you'd like to see more about next week's video, go ahead and subscribe. If this video has helped you at all, it helps us if you would give us a like. And if you need any information on some of the equipment that we talked about in this video, I have links in the description to what I personally would recommend. And before you leave, why don't you let us know what amp are you trying to record and what rooms do you have to record it in? And as always, Thank you so much for watching.